so now i am going to come to the important aspects as i was telling you many of the guys they just jump into the porting without really understanding how does the system boots up so now i am just not going to tell you like how the system boots up i am going to show you the demonstration the live demonstration on how does the beagle bone black boots up okay so i will be showing you in a step by step manner like what does it takes to boot up this particular board okay so let's move on to the demonstration so it's a time for demo so let's be ready what i'm going to do first thing is i'm going to power off my board so let me just have this mini com okay so this is a mini com where the messages will come and now i'm going to power off my board so let's see what do we get so i don't see anything when i'm powering up my board okay so something is coming okay so we see something coming up on this screen but our board is not booting up okay so we don't see any text coming it is just like we are seeing a cc being coming on the board uh, coming from the board so now where is our board stuck okay so nothing is coming up we are just getting a cc and nothing else so where is our board stuck so that's where we need to know the boot up flow okay so let's understand the boot up flow and step by step we will try to bring this board up okay so the very first thing which you get up get in this booting sequence like as soon as you start your system the very first thing which comes up is the stage 0 bootloader so you see this particular message which you are getting c c c c whatever the c c c c you are seeing you are getting this particular message from the stage 0 bootloader and this stage 0 bootloader we also call it as okay so minicom maksud is nothing but just the one which can show you the serial messages like in windows you have the hyper terminal so minicom will show you the serial messages so from the board whatever debug messages are coming will be shown on this minicom so you can say hyper terminal which we use in the windows or somebody is using terraterm or some of the guys they use moba xterm something like that okay so stage 0 bootloader is the one which has come up and we also call it as a rom code okay now what is the role of this rom code rom code will perform a basic minimal initialization of your sock then it will search for the boot devices for the valid image that means it is going to search okay so now if you see the goal is what the goal is from this particular stage zero i want to reach to the point where i can get the command line interface where i can basically work on the work on this particular board okay so for that i need to bring up the root file system and all those kind of stuff so now the next step is this guy searches for the image which will take it to the next step so for that next step we have something called the stage 1 bootloader so now what is happening is this guy is searching for the image which will take it to the next step but unfortunately none of the interface it is able to find the first stage bootloader so that's where your rom code stage 0 bootloader is stuck so now next what we are going to do is next thing is we are going to give it the first stage bootloader so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it the sd card from where the first stage bootloader is available so now let's see what happens okay so 
let me restart minicom there should be there seems to be some issue so i have plugged the sd card let's see what do we get from this sd card now so i'm just okay so now see what we are getting u boot spl 2019.04 something now this is your first stage bootloader so we have received the first stage bootloader so i plugged the sd card which has the first stage bootloader so it came up and but unfortunately it's a stuck it's a stuck and what it is searching for it is searching for the second stage bootloader which is uboot.img so it's stuck so what it is looking for let's look into the boot of flow so now from the stage 0 bootloader we came to the stage 1 bootloader and what does the stage 1 bootloader do it basically will perform a board related initialization typically it will set up the pin muxing maybe for the uart or i2c or whatever interfaces you have it will set up all the things you have the sd card probably it will do the initialization for that as well next it will load the second stage bootloader but the problem for us is it is not able to get the second stage bootloader so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug another sd card which has the image for the second stage bootloader so let me just plug that sd card and let's look into what what happens so I'll be just powering up my board with another stuff. And now what you are going to notice is this is my first stage bootloader. This is my second stage bootloader, which we call it as U-Boot. Okay, so this is U-Boot. So that's fantastic. We have got the stage two bootloader. Now it has booted up till the stage to bootloader but has it booted up all the way down no it is stuck somewhere so it's stuck again so now we need to understand where exactly it's stuck so what it is looking for what does it need so this is where again we will look into the boot up flow the Second stage bootloader, once it comes up, what it will do? It will initialize the further peripherals such as Ethernet, USB and all those things. And the job of the second stage bootloader is to load the kernel. Load the kernel. So that means it is looking for the kernel. All right. So now how do, how do I provide this particular kernel image? So now we are going to do one stuff that from command line, I'm going to type some command and I'm going to load the kernel image. So what I will be doing is from the SD card, from the SD card, I'll take the kernel image and I will load it into the RAM and we will use boot Z and from this memory. Now let's see what happens. Well, so still nothing happens. That means we loaded the kernel image, but it is stuck again. So what is blocking us from booting up? Like we provided this, but it's still it's not booting up. So that's where we have something called device tree binary now the kernel has come up see kernel we loaded but now the kernel doesn't knows how do i proceed like what all peripherals should i initialize what, where i am booting up on how do i go with the initialization so all that information about the hardware the hardware description you get it so it is just resetted there is a watchdog over here so all that information you get it from the device tree so next thing is we basically need to provide the device tree. So bootloader needs to pass the DTB to the kernel. So kernel will parse it and initialize the various hardware. So let's now move on to the step where we will be loading a device tree. So I will just repeat the steps again. 
I'll load the kernel image. Okay, I loaded the kernel image. And then I'm going to load the device tree. Okay, you see DTB. And for passing the device tree, what I will be doing is boot Z kernel image hyphen where the device tree is loaded. Now I will run this command and I'm going to show you one video like what is happening on my board. I don't have a camera with which I can show you the status of my board. So let's see that in a video like what is happening with the board. So now this is the state of our board. So we don't see any activity. So right now I am not able to see any activity on my board and still no activity. So we don't see still. Yeah. So now you see something has come up. Something has come up. Some LEDs are blinking. So right now my board is in this state where I can see now only one LED is blinking. That means something happened. But unfortunately, nothing is showing up on the serial port. That means serial port is still blank. Nothing is coming up. So what has gone wrong in the sense if LEDs were blinking, that means kernel was able to do lots of initialization. It was able to proceed, but the messages are not coming. So that's where we will be moving on to the next concept of boot arcs. So now Linux kernel comes up and Linux kernel, what it needs is the device tree where it has initialized the complete system. And now the important thing which it needs is the boot arcs. Okay, what are boot arcs? It, these are the command line parameters which are passed to the kernel. So what are those command line parameters? Like where should I dump my messages? So now I'm going to show you over here. So again, I will just restart my board. And what I'm going to show you is the same steps. First, I'm loading the kernel image. That means I from the SD card, I'm loading the kernel image. Then I'll be loading the device tree into the RAM. And then I will be setting the command line parameters where I am saying, telling it to the kernel that your console is on the TTY S0. What is TTY S0? This is basically your serial port. That means uh, boards serial port. That means you are at zero. You will find this. Now let's see what happens. So now again, I will run this command. And let's see what happens. So now it comes up. Okay, so your kernel now boots up. So remember, let me summarize what we did. The first stage bootloader, second stage bootloader, device tree kernel, then pass the device tree to this uh, and also pass the command line arguments to the kernel. So this really helped us boot up, but has it really booted up? Let's see. Did we really get the command line parameter? Nope. There is some issue. It is stuck. Okay, RAM address, we need to refer the schematic of the board. Okay, typically I have loaded it in the, at the random address. So I have the RAM starting, uh, I have 512 bytes of RAM. So I just select it somewhere at the safer place. Okay, so now it is saying kernel panic, not syncing, unable to mount root FS on unable block. So now what does it mean is this kernel is looking for the root file system. So now all your logins and everything which you see, your utilities, your binaries, libraries, they, they are there in a root file system. So now kernel has to mount the root file system, has to mount the root file system. And this root file system has the first user space process called in it. 
So, but now our problem is our board doesn't have the root file system. That means there is no physical partition on which I have the root file system. So now what are we what we will be doing? What we are going to use over here is something called RAM disk. RAM disk, as the name itself suggests, is something like let me explain you. It is something like You have a RAM, a portion of RAM, you treat it as if it's a disk. So all your things like a bin, S bin, all those folders, they actually lie on RAM. So now this is a technique by which you can recover your board. Let's say your hard disk, uh, let's say your uh, uh, disk is corrupted. Let's say my SD card is corrupted. My EMMC is corrupted. My flash is corrupted. So what I can do is I can still boot up my system with a RAM disk. And this is what typically happens in the Ubuntu also. Let's say Ubuntu, the hard disk is not able to come. So it will get you into the init RAM FS. So where your root file system is being mounted on the RAM because you don't have the physical disk. Your physical disk is corrupted. So same thing. I'm going to do it over here. But now, rather than me typing these commands over here, what I will be doing is I have a text file which has all this information over there, all the instructions to have the kernel being loaded, have the DTB being loaded, and then have the RAM disk being loaded. So all those things are being done over there. So what I will be doing, fat load so this file has all the instructions which i will be loading and then i'll be just doing this so what it will be doing what it is doing is it loaded the RAM disk, the kernel image, the device tree, and with that, your board comes up. Okay, so board is booted up. I am able to type the ls command. I have has been over here. I should be able to do all the things. So this is one of the I can say basic approach with the help of which I was able to bring the board. Okay, so all the images were available just using those images and understanding the boot up flow we are able to bring up. So now what will happen? So using this RAM disk, finally the board boots up, but let's reboot. What will happen? It will again get stuck because further instructions are not there. So it will again get stuck at the your boot. So this was the short demo to familiarize you on how does the embedded Linux board comes up. So to summarize, what happens here is what happens over here is first thing basically the ROM code will come up, then the first stage bootloader will come up, then the second stage bootloader will come up. Then the second stage bootloader should pass the device tree and the boot arts to the kernel. Using that, the kernel should basically come up and it should mount the root file system. And with that, we were able to boot up the board. So now if you see, take any board, take any board, you will find the similar kind of boot up sequence. Few things here and there. So using this, I was able to apply all these fundamentals to any board, be it like a STM32, IMX8, or be it like a Jetson Nano, all those things I was able to apply, Jetson uh, TX1, I believe. So that particular board, I was able to apply all the things. So take any complex board, it will have this basic fundamental over here. Okay, so that's the part number.